49 steps to owning a service dog. <laughs> One, join the military at 17 to serve your country and as a way to get a college degree without debt. Serve nine years and seven months on active duty. Two, separate from the military as soon as your commitment is complete in order to get away from frequent deployments and even more frequent harassment. Three, realize that your experiences in the military affected you in ways that you don't understand. You've kept away from situations where men are drinking because you can't relax. You've been avoiding crowds for months because the anxiety of being around all those people triggers migraines. And you get jumpy when a strange man stands too close behind you in line for coffee. Four, visit local animal shelters to pick out a dog for a new running and hiking buddy now that you won't have to worry about short notice deployments. Choose one that is athletic, high energy, with intelligent eyes, and a tendency to lick your fingers and face. A volunteer at the shelter will say in a high-pitched tone, Oh, you're adopting Princess. She's such a beautiful dog. We rescued her from a shelter up north the day she was going to be put down. Then we brought her here, and she was adopted by a couple that kept her in a kennel for 8 to 10 hours a day until she chewed out of it and destroyed their house. They returned her after a week, so she might have some issues. Immediately change her name from Princess to something more fitting for a real dog. Five. Read online about service dogs for veterans and decide to start training your rescue dog. You're not sure if you need a service dog or not, but you know you need help, and if you decide not to use her as a service dog, you figure you'll just have an extremely obedient pet. <laughs> Six, visit the local VA hospital to start your disability benefits for tinnitus caused by hours working underwater as a diver where sound is amplified, and receive a U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs ID card. Seven, learn that it is possible to have a disability rating for a psychiatric disorder. Eight, admit to yourself that you've suffered with depression and anxiety for years, but hid it from your coworkers and medical record under the fear of losing your job in the military. Nine, learn that there is a mental health floor in the VA hospital with walk-in spots to see a psychiatrist. Bring your service dog in training because you will need her. You'll be in tight spaces with many other veterans, and she may be the only thing preventing you from having a panic attack. Ten, focus on your dog. When you sit in the mental health waiting area under the buzzing fluorescent lights, she will sit obediently at your feet, completely relaxed, with her attention on you. VA hospital workers will smile at you and say, your dog is so well behaved. A man in his 50s with a shaggy beard will stand in the corner of the waiting area talking loudly. He will say, there's not supposed to be dogs here. It's a hospital. No dogs in the hospital. Why is there a dog? No dogs allowed. She's got a dog. No dogs allowed. Why is nobody kicking out her dog? No fucking dogs. <laughs> 11. Ignore this man. <laughs> 12. Sit down in the psychiatrist's office. She will ask you, so you're here for medication? 13. Tell her that you don't want meds. 14. Tell her that you want a prescription for a service dog. 15. Explain to her what a service dog is. 16. Learn that sexual harassment, sexual assault, and rape fall under the title of military sexual trauma. 17. Receive referral to the Military Sexual Trauma and Interpersonal Trauma Clinic of the VA Healthcare System. 18. Schedule appointment for mental health orientation meeting at the local VA clinic in two months. 19. Memorize the definition of a service dog listed in the Americans with Disabilities Act. Service animals are defined as dogs that are individually trained to do work or perform tasks for people with disabilities. 20. Know your access rights. Under the ADA, businesses that serve the public must allow service animals to accompany people with disabilities in all areas of the facility where the public is normally allowed to go. 21. Know that staff of a store may ask only two questions when they see you with your service dog. Is the dog required because of a disability? And what task has the dog been trained to perform? 22. Be sure to keep your response vague when answering questions about your service dog to avoid telling people what your disability is and being discriminated against. Do not announce, my service dog is trained to watch behind me when I have to stand with my back to other people. She blocks people from getting too close to me and triggering anxiety attacks, and she also guards me and licks me when I have an anxiety attack. Instead say, my service dog alerts to my medical condition. <laughs> 23. Attend mental health orientation at the local VA clinic. 24. Following orientation, meet with yet another psychiatrist. 25. Sit down in the psychiatrist's office. She will ask you, so you're here for medication? 26. Tell her that you don't want meds. Tell her you want a prescription for a service dog. Explain to her what a service dog is. 27. 
Listen closely as the psychiatrist recommends that you attend therapy sessions. She will tell you that it will be several months before you can get an appointment for an individual therapy session. You're better off signing up for the group therapy sessions. We start the groups in cycles, so it looks like you'll have to wait three months until the next ones start. We can sign you up now and call you before the group starts. 28. Sign up for the anxiety group therapy sessions. Do not expect a phone call. You will not receive a phone call. 29. Make appointment to see the physician assistant in two weeks. 30. Sit down in the physician assistant's office. He will ask you, so you're here for medication? <laughs> 31. Tell him that you don't want meds. Tell him you want a prescription for a service dog. Explain to him what a service dog is. 32. Receive prescription for a medical alert service dog to assist with your diagnosed PTSD. 33. Contact nonprofit organization Train a Dog, Save a Warrior to receive funding for service dog training. The man who answers the phone will say, How long were you in the military for? Don't you think you deserve free service dog training for everything you went through? 34. Complete application for the program, including multiple character references, mental health questionnaires, letters of recommendation from the VA physician assistant, and prescription for service dog. You will be accepted into the program, and they will contact local trainers to find one who will work with you and your dog. 35. Don't get your hopes up about free service dog training. All local organizations will refuse to work with a PTSD service dog, claiming that they only train mobility dogs. 36. Continue training your dog on your own, paying for lessons with your own money. 37. Put a vest on your dog that makes her easily identifiable as a service dog. 38. Never put your dog's name on a vest or collar that other people can easily read. They will shout your service dog's name and try to distract her. 39. You can add a patch that says, Disabled Veteran. 40. Be prepared to answer questions such as, How is the dog a disabled veteran? Was she in combat in Iraq? <laughs> And, bless you, honey, what organization are you training the dog for? I could never do that. Train a dog and give it away. 41. Explain to strangers that the service dog is, in fact, for you, and that you are the disabled veteran. Expect the stranger to become confused, and then the next question will be, Oh, so you have PTSD. 42. Politely explain that it is actually extremely rude to ask a stranger about her medical history. 43. When people ask to pet your dog, say one of two things. Not right now, she's working. Or, sure, she's friendly, thank you for asking. Choose which one to say based on how focused you need your service dog to be at the moment. If she's being touched by strangers, she won't be paying as much attention to you. 44. Expect drive-by pettings and people whistling and calling to your dog when in public places. 45. Respond to this unwanted behavior by saying, please don't do that, she's working right now. Sometimes people will apologize. Sometimes they will yell at you or mumble under their breath, fucking cunt. Ignore them. 46. Always bring a collapsible water bowl with you. Train your dog to pee and poop on command and on grass, dirt, concrete, and astroturf. 47. When applying for jobs and interviewing, do not mention your service dog or disability until you have an offer. If it looks like you're about to get a job offer and you try to be open with the company, wanting to work for an organization that accepts you and your service dog as a team, do not expect any further correspondence about the job. 48. Try leaving your dog at home even when you know you'll be working in a small crowded room. Realize that you do need your service dog to help you focus, prevent migraines, and stop panic attacks. 49. Strangers will say, that's so great that you get to take your dog with you everywhere. Smile and think to yourself sarcastically. Maybe one day they'll be so lucky. I